Good morning and welcome to Sunday School. Today is Sunday, May the 9th, 2021. This is Sister Linda Kirkland coming on behalf of the Greater Beulah Missionary Baptist Church where the Reverend Anthony L. Willis Sr. is our pastor. Again, I say welcome. Thank you so much for joining in with me and learning another Sunday School lesson this morning. Hallelujah. Well, it may not be morning when you're clicking on, whenever you're clicking on, glory to God. So happy that you even <clears throat> decided to click on. So listen, we have another great Sunday lesson today. It's called Empty Rituals, uh, Rituals Are Useless. Yes, it's coming from Isaiah, the 29th chapter, the 13th through the 24th verse. And before we get started, I want to say happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers out there. Happy Mother's Day. I tell you, the mothers, the mothers, the mothers, what would we do without them? I tell you, it is a blessing. Amen. All right, so let's open up with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we once more and again, Lord God, we come before you to say thank you, Lord. Once more again, Lord, you have enabled us to see another Sunday. And for that, we are truly grateful. So Father, I pray that as we come to learn more of the lesson this morning, Lord, I pray that you will open our minds, our hearts, and our ears so that we can come and we can learn more of you, Lord God. I pray that what it is, whatever it is that you desire for me to share, share, Lord God, that you would just decrease Linda and increase your spirit that dwell within me so that I can reach your people. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. So guess what? You know, my words is another great lesson, but truly, this really is another great lesson. We are talking about Isaiah this morning. Now, Isaiah, he was one of the uh, prophets. He used to give a lot of prophecies. And um, I tell you, the story is just great. So, you know, we're just going to jump on into the stories. Now, there's a whole heap of verses. I think it's like 13 verses. So hopefully you have the Bible so you can read along with me. But I'm going to go ahead and let's jump into the lesson because it's so many scriptures. And I want to make sure that we still stay within our Sunday school review. So I try to just to give a quick review. Try not to hold you long. But sometimes the lesson just gets so good. So I apologize if I go over a little so in today's lesson, we're talking about Isaiah. He tells us that the Israelites knew how to talk the talk, but what? But they didn't walk the walk. And so you think about it, what does that really mean? That means that they were being fake followers of Christ, just doing it for the show. We all know about that, right? But God sees and he knows all, right? So we can't hide nothing from God. So think about it. Do you know anyone who's really good at saying some things but doing something different? Yeah, I'm sure we all can think of a few people, right? But you can't always trust what people say, but you can believe what their actions are. My grandmother used to tell me that. But in the story, how did the Israelites get away with this? You know, they had removed their heart from God. They was not doing the things of God. And so it's important to understand that God never left the Israelites. Every time there was a distance between God and the people and the Israelites, it wasn't because of God. Now, we need to make sure we got that straight. And you know how that is even today. We wander off from God. God never leave us. You know the story about the footprints in the, stand, in the sand? It's always us. Amen? So the Israelites, they made their choice and had to live with the consequences. The same way you and I have to live with the consequences with the mistakes that we make, right? So the Israelites had made several mistakes. They, they were putting um, men before God. They value other people's opinion other than the word of God. They thought that they were smarter, smarter than anybody else. They thought that they can um, just rank themselves being higher than anybody else. What does that sound like to you today? You know anyone that tried to do that? That act like there's no God? Right. We could, we could name a few folks, right? 
But basically, the Israelites back then, they was being proudful. And they was not doing the things of God. And we see a lot of this happening in, even in today's world. Think about it. We go back to school now. You, you hear, hear educators saying that now we wasn't created by God. That we just came into existence. I know you don't heard that. People are being proudful and they think that they don't need God. That they doing just fine on their own. You know what they say. You know a lot of people are, are more concerned with how the world view them. Other than living the way that God has called us to live through his word. But I tell you it's a dangerous thing for us to really live thinking that we don't need God. Because I think about with everything that's going on. Isaiah predicted that God would bring restoration to the land and his people and that they would no longer be deaf and blind to his good works, but they would once again follow God wholeheartedly and praise him for his goodness. You know, Isaiah even said the humble would be joyful. This is the fruit of the spirit that occurs when we humble ourselves before the Lord. And those who are proudful cannot experience the same joy as those who humble in God. See, his joy becomes our gift instead of our own vanity. And while proudful people can't find success, they can't find true, they can't find true joy, you can say, outside of God. Really, none of us can. If you think about it, you're missing out on all the fullness of joy that you can have within God. Everything outside of God will ultimately lead to disappointment to you. Trust me. And then we go down to the closing verses and God refers to Israel as Jacob. You may remember Jacob. Remember his brother was Esau and Jacob stole his, his birthright. Remember that story? And his name meant, actually meant tricker. It really did. And it has a, has a bit of negative vibes for the people back then. But because God's restoration is so full and complete, even Jacob wouldn't be ashamed. The Israelites would return to the faith and respect the Lord once again in a way that would please their forefather. Isaiah talked a lot about spiritual blindness and the effect of it, but we know that God's healing brings light and joy once more. See, when we put our hope in God, we can believe in his restoration and healing. His desire is to redeem us from our sin. Lord, have mercy. It just help us all along. See, God really doesn't delight in punishing his children, but he does rejoice when we return to him humbly and delight in punishing his, I mean, he don't delight in punishing his children, but he rejoices when we return to him and ask him for forgiveness. That is certainly true. So, when you think about it, what is an era in your life that needs redeeming today? I really want you to ponder that question. What is an area in your life that needs some restoration today? See, when God is, well, let's put it this way. See, take it to God with a pure and a sincere heart. Asking God to really show you and asking him for his forgiveness. And he will forgive you and begin the restoration process right then and right there. See, when God's healing comes, hmm, don't be surprised if it comes in a way that you didn't even expect it. Hallelujah. God is known for working in mysterious ways. Yes, he is. And I can rejoice behind that because he have did that for me. Amen. So God can do whatever you think is impossible. But remembering that God has it all under control, even if you feel like you don't understand what is going on, you just have to trust him. Let's think about last year. Do you recall everything that happened in 2020? Man, 2020 was a year, wasn't it? We had a lot of the racism riots going on. We had a lot of murder going on. We had a lot of death due to COVID-19 coming in on the picture. And it seems as if each month it brought something new. 
And it seems like every time we looked around, something else was happening, right? But even though all of that was going on, I still trust God and believe that he was going to bring us through. And I still believe it. See, what I have learned is that you, you only can accept the plans that you understand. See, when you can't understand the plan, that's when we get confused and we think, oh, Lord, where are you? But see, sometimes you have to realize that the plan that God has for you is totally different than what the plan that you have. Because I am a witness to that. That's why this excites me because my plan was never... You know, I have recently came back home from California and I'm telling you that was not in my plan to do. But when you follow God, God sends his blessings time after time after time. God is so faithful. You just got to tr trust him, church. So, see, God, he, he, he basically don't need your uh, permission or approval to do anything, even though we think we got our life under under our control but trust me God knows what he is doing and the prop the proper response that we need to give to God is to lay down ourselves and humble ourselves before him and tell him Lord it is your will not mine and this can be difficult to do and I can tell you that it's difficult because I went through it but it is the way to true joy and freedom within God. I am a witness, church. I can tell you every time that you follow and do what the Lord says, it's so much better for you. Amen. So let's recap. I tell you, every time I get excited with this time, just get away with me. But let me, let's me let recap the story because I was giving you a lot of examples about me. But I wanted to bring the, the story into life so that you can really understand what is going on. But, but let me really just tell you about the story. So what happened today in today's lesson that Isaiah had a prophecy for Israel. And they had gone off what you call, <laughs> they have gone off the wagon. They have what we call it. They have um, went crazy. They have flipped the, tr the trip, whatever you want to call it. But they stepped away from God, basically. And they believe it would be satisfactory to just say the words and go through the motion. But this wasn't good enough for God. He wants you to be all in to him. Do you know anyone like that? Think about it. You know, we could be fake when we come to church on Sunday and we can look like that. Oh, woo, she say, she say, she singing. She got the Holy Ghost over in the corner. She got tears flying everywhere. She, uh, But what do you do when you leave the church house? What do you do when you leave the church house? So that's what Isaiah prophecy was about. Fake people. Forgetting that God still sees you. See, they say that they believed in the Lord, but their actions didn't show it. Some people may call this playing church, right? Which is a dangerous thing to do, church. God wants you to be real with him. Amen? So Isaiah, he predicted that through is that though Israel was on the wrong track, that they would repent one day and God would bring full restoration to him. And it, it would be so complete that even Jacob, one that had reason for shame, would no longer feel shame about himself or his people. So what can we learn from this story? How important is it for us to live under the direction of God? We should always be willing, as Christians that is, to walk and follow the will of God. So... If forever you, there's a reason that you feel like, oh, you know, I, 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 I didn't do or say the right thing, that's okay. Because you know what? There's only one perfect person in the world. So forgive me, Lord. Fall on your face and forgive me. God is ready to forgive you and welcome you back into the fold. All you have to do is reach out. God is there. He knows that we're going to make mistakes. And that's one of the things I always say, how you can determine a Christian from a non-Christian. Because a true Christian, they will admit their mistakes, fall on their knees to God, and don't have a problem going to someone else when they know that they have done wrong. 
Amen. Well, here we are again. Thank you so much for joining me today. I told you it was going to be a great lesson. It's a lesson that we all should understand and know about it. Don't be fake when it comes to your position with Christ. God need us to be his hand and feet. So let's go out there and be true witnesses for Christ. God bless you and have a blessed week.